Hey guys, welcome to the second edition of iChat. As you can see, I'm back in my wonderful recording studio. And today we're going to be looking at the second portion of the welcome kit, or the doctor's protocols. And I'm going to help walk through some of that material, because I know there's a lot there. So let's get started. What we're looking at today is the doctor protocol kit. Although it says doctor, any healthcare professional can utilize the information in here. And although they're called protocols, we should really be terming them preferred practice patterns, and that's something that Dr. Stephen Ma mentioned. Some people already have an established way to treat dry eye in, your pra in the practice. This is an addition to that. It doesn't need to replace it. In this kit, there is a treatment algorithm. There are the preferred practice patterns. There are pre-designed forms to help you along your way. And there's a very important document at the end, which is drug interactions and contraindications. The treatment algorithm is a document designed to really walk you through the fundamentals of how dry eye is treated at iris. And there's two components here. The top component is walking through how to integrate PRN into your clinic. PRN, when you're assessing dry eye, can either be part of a standard eye exam or a person can present with dry eye as their chief complaint. Once somebody mentions they have dry eye or you suspect they have dry eye, it's very important that we do a very thorough case history. You'll notice a lot of people with dry eye also have other inflammatory conditions. Things like high blood pressure, arthritis, some of them will have things like diabetes, elevated cholesterol, and you'll notice a strong correlation, especially if you start asking the right questions. Once you determine the case history, including how often these people are eating fish, once you determine that, you want to score the level of their dry eye using your CDEA, the assessment form. You want to clinically look at their eyes. You then want to go through the diagnosis and the treatment. You then have that person come back at the appropriate uh, time frame. For most people, when I start them on PRN products, I see them back in two months to help assess and see if there are any additional steps we can do. I don't tell them I'm assessing if the product's working. I'm assessing to see if there are additional steps required. The last portion down on the bottom here is once you determine somebody needs PRN, there are various ways to get them onto PRN. There's a summary of the algorithm here on how to use it in your office. There is a verbal description of each stage in the algorithm that walks you through what some of our preferred practices are doing, what some of our doctors are doing during those steps, and how to integrate it into your office. If you're struggling at a particular portion or you just want some more information on how to proceed in a given section, it's important that you take a peek at these. The next page talks about online tools that are either available at present or will be available shortly. There's going to be an online version of the CDEA. There will also be an online risk assessment. This risk assessment you can utilize in lieu of a case history or you can use it to augment your case history to help identify people who are at risk of inflammatory disease. The one online tool that is available at present is a library of articles uh, you've seen that in the, um, the clinical index. That library of articles is available on the PRN website, soon to be the IRIS website. The next page are some practice tips that we take from some of our best practices giving PRN products to their patients. One thing mentioned here, but also elaborated in the Welcome Kit, is the Health Coach. The Health Coach is a wonderful tool to help identify problems that your patients are having with the product. If they're getting stomach upset, itchy, a little bit of a rash, and you're not sure exactly what's going on, having them call one of the PRN health coaches is a wonderful way to do it. There is one other way to use the health coach, and it's mentioned in the algorithm. If after you identify, you identify the patient has dry eye or really needs to have a PRN product, but you don't have the chair time or potentially the associate's time to discuss PRN and all, all the ins and outs of the program with the patient, what you can do is fill out a request form available on the intranet or from your PRN rep. With this form, the patient signs off on it and a health coach will contact the patient or the patient can contact the health coach and help figure out if the PRN product is right for them. This is not the preferred method. At IRIS, we would rather have the doctor and the team get the patient signed up right there in the office, but if the patient wants to think about it or wants some more information, this is a very valid and easy way to help that patient along, along their pathway. The next series of documents are the preferred practice patterns. The first one is looking at simple dry eye. What you do is you 
rank the severity, and then you prescribe what is underneath the column. So for somebody with extreme dry eye, we're going to use steroids to help bring things under control. You're going to use traditional therapy, such as lid scrubs, warm compresses, artificial tears, but you're immediately also going to start them on an omega-3, which is a long-term relief. As the severity decreases over time, you'll notice that the last remaining product is their omega-3, and this is what's really going to keep their eyes from heading back into that negative state. One of the most important things that we look at with people with a dry eye is if there are complicating factors, you will not achieve amazing results. If somebody has debris on their tear, in their tear film or on their eyelids and lashes, if they have allergies or allergic conjunctivitis, if they have an extreme meibomian gland dysfunction, or if they have lid anomalies, even notching or cantalaxity, what you're going to notice is your results are suboptimal. So what you want to do is treat those first. What I do for my dry eye assessment is really simple. I first rate their symptoms. I then look at their lids and lashes. I then look at the inside of their eyelid. I look at their meibomian glands. And then I look at their eyelids themselves. And I treat accordingly. What I do is find the condition they have, and then I match it to the severity. Once I have the complication under control, then I move back to the preferred practice patterns one and walk them through that. When we're looking at macular degeneration, I start all of my patients at risk of forming macular degeneration or just concerned about general health on eye omega advantage. As the risk escalates or as I start seeing signs of macular degeneration, I put them on the macular vitamin package. The ARIDS-1 study is telling us that we should wait till we have confluent drusen before we start using vitamin therapy. I myself start my patients a little earlier, especially if they have a family history, large pupils, blue eyes. The more risk factors they have, the sooner I start using a vitamin therapy. The next document you've heard me alluding to throughout our entire presentation, it's the dry eye assessment form. What this does is ranks the severity of your patient's symptoms. I do not have every patient in our office fill this out. Only the ones who I'm unsure if I want to start them on a nutrient or the ones I am starting on a nutrient. If after our exam I'm going to start them on an omega-3 for dry eye, I then have them fill this out as part of the dispensing process. You'll notice I utilize the word dispensing process and that's really important. One of the things we should touch on is if somebody comes in with nine symptoms, they're having trouble driving at night, they're having trouble reading, they do not have sunglasses, and they have dry eye, we need to prioritize their difficulties. What I tend to do is prioritize their difficulties into the reason they've come in, which usually is they have blurry vision somewhere. That day, I deal with their blurry vision. I get them a pair of glasses and I tell them when they come to pick up their glasses, I'm going to have our team discuss the nutrient package that we've been discussing today and we're going to see if that's right for you. In the meantime, I'd like you to use an artificial tear to start the process going, but when you come back in, I'm going to get you started on a nutrient. However your office wants to set things up is how you should. Have a discussion with your manager, have a discussion with your team, and set up a plan. The last thing you want to do is try to do 12 things on the same day. For the two-month visit, I have my patient given the dry eye assessment form in the pretest area before I see them. My team has actually printed my dry eye exam form on the back of that. I then use this form and I assess, again, their eyelids, their eyelashes, their tear film stability, and we look at the process. If the patient has experienced a change in their level of dry eye or in their signs of dry eye, we know that the nutrient has helped. I then let the patient know we've identified a nutrient deficiency and we have three choices. We can either go back to being nutrient deficient, we can radically change their diet to include fish five to seven times a week, or we can stay on the nutrient. Dr. Jean has asked any time we start a patient on a nutrient product, we send a letter to the GP. These letters have been pre-typed for you. All you do is you change your name down at the bottom here or, and your store information. There are letters, depending on how you want to talk to your GPs, asking for their collaboration. There's another level where you're not really asking permission, you're just informing the GP that you're starting them. There's also a letter typed out for the insurance company. Most of these nutrients are not covered under most plans. Some plans do cover it, especially with the healthcare spending account. 
The last series of documents are the drug interactions and contraindications. There truly are not a lot of drug interactions and contraindications for a triglyceride omega-3. Triglyceride omega-3 is the equivalent of eating a clean piece of fish. When we're starting somebody on a nutrient package, we have to let them know what to expect. Sometimes you can get a little bit of a stomach ache, a little bit of itching, potentially some acne as your body adjusts to the metabolism. When you start somebody on a nutrient, if their cousin's brother's dog ends up with a sore toe, somehow it's because of the nutrients you put them on. So you have to be very careful. In here, we've summarized the literature on what dosing to use. Dosing for diabetics, dosing for people who are pregnant, dosing for people who have pre-existing gastrointestinal issues, and what allergies to look for before you start the product. There are some adverse reactions that people can have. These generally go away. If somebody has a stomach upset or is given diarrhea by the product, that's because their body is not used to metabolizing fish. This is where you can utilize the health coach. This is where you can utilize the natural path, or you can send an email to me. Let your patients know that sometimes people, as their body is getting used to a new product, a new level of fatty acids, it's going to take a little bit of time for the body to adjust. That's why we start at two capsules a day, and that's why we gradually move up. Be available for your patients. Be armed with the information, because if they are having an issue, you really want to get to that issue. And this is where follow-up comes in. If you follow up with your patients and prep them for what may happen and watch them, you're going to notice your patients are a lot happier. There's a reason you're starting them on these products. You don't want a mild little bit of a stomach upset as their body's adjusting to get in the way of their general health. Thank you for coming to this iChat. I know it's been a little bit longer than we intended. There was a lot of information here to go through, and I want to make sure that you can help your patients. If you have any questions or comments, please send me an email. In good health, Dr. Quinn, signing off.